Michael, well, as ever in war, it's a question of who you believe. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Everyone has their own truth. I mean, uh, Dmitry Peskov this morning, the uh, uh, Kremlin spokesman, he had nothing to say about whether Sokolov was alive or not. Remember, the, the strike was last Friday on the headquarters of the, of the Black Sea Fleet. So on the following Tuesday, if the, if the commander had walked away alive and well, you'd think that the Kremlin would know about that incontrovertibly. Instead of which, they put out a video which was pretty obscure and they didn't say who Sokolov was, but we think they, they assume, we, we assume they mean this man on, on the left. And that looks like Sokolov, not entirely, not completely like him, but enough like him. Uh, Three star admiral. Um, there's his pips on his shoulder. Um, he's, there's his insignia, which are consistent with the insignia which uh, Sokolov has. So I'm prepared to believe that's Sokolov. I'm not convinced that was today. But when it... Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So and we know it? that we can see that video has been edited, mm. and maybe it was today. Maybe it's been edited and it was today. But if the man is alive and well, he may, he may be alive but not well. He may have been injured. But if he's alive and well, it's very easy for the Kremlin to produce a video, which is incontrovertibly today. Yeah. And until they do that, I think we'll all assume that probably he's at least been injured. Right, now, this map, and uh, we're talking today about um, strikes. Is it drone strikes quite close in, to uh, the border with, uh, yeah, with Romania? Yeah, uh, with Romania, yeah. Well, two things. One is Sevastopol. I mean, this is where the Ukrainian missile strike was last week mm -hmm. on Friday that we were talking about on the, the base of the Black Sea Fleet. Meanwhile, the Russians have been attacking Odessa, uh, a big attacks on Odessa overnight and at, uh, towards Ismail, and they've hit the uh, Olivka Izekia, um, crossing, which mm. is a, a ferry crossing between, uh, right on the Danube, between Ukraine and Romania. And mm. Romania, of course, is a NATO That's state. Country, yeah. So these uh, attacks are getting pretty close to NATO territory, and that's the Russians... I mean, whether that was deliberate or not, or, or uh, an accident, we don't know, mm. but it's right on the Romanian border. Yeah, there was one very close to the Polish border, wasn't there? There was, Quite early indeed. in the war, which exactly, turned out yeah. to be a Ukrainian... And that turned out to be a Ukrainian yeah. anti-aircraft missile yeah. that went off course or was chasing yeah. a Russian missile. These things will happen, yeah. but it's not helpful when they do. Right, and just... Uh... 40 seconds, the latest on the battlefield. Yeah, I mean, change of tactics in a way, or at least a, a, a combination of tactic, tactics. The Russians are moving some of their best forces from the area of Klitschkivka, Bakhmut, where they're losing ground, but they're, they're bringing some of their best forces round to the south, which is where the battle is really getting quite intense. Mm. So they brought the 7th uh, VDV Division and the 76th VDV Division, those airborne divisions. They've taken five regiments out of those two divisions to bring them to the south. And if you look a bit more closely at what's going on in the south, the actual front is quite narrow. It's between Nova Prokopivka and Vabove. Now, the U Ukrainians are doing well in all of that area. We can see the yellow. They think that they are through the main defences. If they are then they'll make pretty big progress towards Tokmak, which is eight miles away. And that's a big target, Tokmak, if they do. The Russians are playing for time, but the Russians have put more or less everything on the front line um, that, because it seems that Putin has demanded that they defend every inch. Mm. And with that, that means that they've got nothing behind. They've got, they've got no mobile reserve that we know of, no operational reserve, which is what these VDV forces should have been. So the Ukrainians think they're on the verge of a breakthrough. The Russians are playing for time when the weather changes. OK. Either way, six weeks will settle it one way or another, as far as this offensive goes. OK, Michael, thanks very much.